Welcome to Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Well, as much as it drives Fuzzy Butts all over this place, absolutely crazy when they hear me say it. I am the host of this show, your big dog, Luke Robinson, back again with you this week. And what we don't have with us this week is our co-host, our co-producer, and occasionally our co-pilot, Ginger Morgan, the executive director of the Puppy Up Foundation. She is not joining us this week because this is, I am nerding out, this is all your big dogs episode. I've been wanting to do this for a long, 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 long time, but I just haven't found the right artist to join me for an entire episode on art and NFT. So with tremendous honor and privilege, uh, I would like to introduce our guest on this episode. He's a fellow artist. Uh, I met him on uh, Twitter, now called X. Mark Kelly, NFT artist. I don't know how to introduce you other than that. So welcome to Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Yeah, hi. Well, very, uh, very much thank you for having me on. I, I, it's very difficult as, as a Brit to match the energy level of a, of a, a, a US host, but I'll try and do what I can. It was <laughs> a, a little bit quieter. I would just introduce me the same way as I do in the Twitter bio, which is to say I'm a, a creator and a curator, and occasionally a collector as well. At different times, different activities kind of come to the come to the surface. I'm just actually closing a big chapter because for the last year, I've been curating on Nifty Gateway, and I've done a weekly Sourcebook Sundays because Sourcebook is my artist handle. Um, I've been doing a Sourcebook Sundays, which is which is every week for the last fifty two, and sometimes midweek as well. I've been putting out, I've introduced over a hundred artists to the, the wow. platform as well as, uh, and there's no one has done more other than Nifty Gateway themselves. So I'm very proud of that. And I've also had the chance to introduce my own art. So it's been, it's been great, but first, uh, first drop, which was a year ago, the same three artists who are dropping the grand finale. Um, we put three open editions out. We sold did a turnover about eight thousand dollars. We were the only drop on Nifty Gateway that day. Wow! But then the the doors flew open. All the publishers came in, and yesterday, it was one when it launched. It was one of over forty simultaneous live drops. So what's happened is the you know the the dam has burst. Everyone can can be a publisher who wants to be, and a lot of them are just churning out things time after time. So inevitably, supply and demand kicks in. And, you know, we are going to do nowhere near the volume that we did last year. So it's a good time to step away, think of something else, happy with with that, to close that chapter and start looking at other things. I've got irons in the fire at Foundation where I might do another world. The Foundation Worlds are a great platform for curators. Um, and what I haven't done, what I plan to do in the first case, but wasn't able to because of restrictions, I want to do a, a Foundation dollar store like literally the place where people can put something out for 0 0.01 ether as either an addition, a collection, a one of one if they, they feel so so inclined. There's a lot of great art available at very rock bottom prices there. And I know the people to tap up. I know the people who come in and fill that and make it a big success. So I've got that. Object.com, the Tez chain right. has got great, great talent. Right. I've always collected there. I stopped creating and minting there just because the rewards weren't in it. But you know what? I've given up. I've given up my initial plan of making a fortune from NFTs. <laughs> now, I, now well, let's, just, well, let's let's start there. You you kind of jumped off to the deep end, and you have to understand the demographic of my of audience. We're mostly pet parents, and yeah. and I I I'm new to this. Uh, it's only a year ago when I started, maybe a little bit longer than that, when I started looking at NFTs and art. And I jumped off and it, and, and it just so happened to be at one of the craziest times because that's when all of the, the hullabaloo, that's when all of the buzz and the PFPs that were selling to celebrities for millions of dollars, all that was going on. And then it just tanked. So it's been, it's been a crazy year since I've been doing this. So, so most of my, I've been trying to get, use art and more importantly, my love of companion animals as a way to support my foundation. And I've been trying to get, pet parents that aren't in the crypto NFT space over to buying art, but I can't do that because it's so crazy. Everything is so crazy. Yeah. Let's start from the very beginning, Mark. Let's start out and learn about you. Mm -hmm. what, 
since this is about fuzzy butts and companion animals, do you have any fuzzy butts of your own? I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. So let's roll roll back. I'm I'm sort of late sixties, father of six, grandfather of six. We've got two. We've got two Yorkshire Terriers who I've because they go crazy when anyone comes to the door. Great guard dogs. I've locked them in the kitchen just because otherwise they're going to go. You'd be yapping around the place. So yes, we 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 are pet parents too. Yes, um, and uh, yeah, so I've got um, I've only been involved with NFTs a little longer than you uh, for the last okay. two years. But just to wind back, I'm sort of I've been in business. I've been a wage slave most of the time. You know, I've been working at all. But I've always had I've always had two th things to keep me sane. One is little creative outlets, and mainly that's been music or writing. I'd consider myself more of a, a written word artist than a visual artist to start with. So I've always had that creative um, path going on. And also, a lot of my hobbies have been to do with stopping working. It's it's to do with making money. So I've tried all the, the horse racing, roulette, um, <laughs> you know, poker, all anything that could do. In fact, one one time I combined those two, the writing and the and the um making money into something called the bot farm, which was a, a blog I ran for a year or so, which was just about automating money making things. But I found the writing about it was just as en engaging as actually trying to do it. So creative strain, uh, making money, um I, I got into crypto about 2017 because okay. my son had made a, a small investment, which became a large investment. So he uh, he got me started with some XRP and some Litecoin. Um, and, I, I, and I sort of carried on with that. I would have still been doing that, but um, I kind of got over over enthusiastic and took a tumble in February of 2021 when I was over leveraged. I had kind of three times leverage position on Ether when it just crashed. It crashed more than 33%, which wow. just took took out all of my money. So mm -hmm. I was I was left sucking wind um, right about the time in March 21 when Beeple suddenly had this $69 million sale for digital art. So I thought that's, that's got to be worth a look. And I got in initially as a creator on OpenSea, and I thought, well, you know, literature is a valid form of art. So my first ever minted NFTs were little haikus and hmm. snippets of, of poetry and prose. Um, and that didn't go, uh, you know, nobody was ready. I still don't think people are ready for literary NFTs. But while I was doing that, I got uh, I got to see what was happening on Nifty Gateway. I started to be a collector. For the longest time, I, um, I for like six months, I was just collecting like crazy because uh, it's it's like a bug. It's one more obsession, and um, and I and I got got into it very thoroughly. I, I think we should probably just stop right there for just yeah, a sure. second and talk about what an NFT is because there are going to yeah. be some people listening to this that typically tune in to listen to like cancer and companion animals or <laughs> uh, an episode so, about. I'm sorry. Uh, Osteoarthritis. Yeah. Well, no, but when it's all connected, though, and you think, and it's all interconnected, and I, I kind of want to weave this whole story in. It is, um, and I love that you're a Yorkie dad. Just shout out to Paul, Pauline up yeah. in uh, uh, up in Pennsylvania. She's a she's a big Yorkie family. Love Yorkies. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, let's start off with the NFTs. About what are NFTs um, to our audience? They're just it's it's non fungible tokens, which basically. Um, is digital artwork, and it could be not only artwork in terms of uh, mm -hmm. illustrations or digital art. It can be what you were talking about, prose, poetry, and ultimately what we're seeing now, Mark, and we can expound on this later, is we're starting to see um, animation, and we're going to start to see film. So basically, anything, anything can be creatively packaged and tokenized mm -hmm. and then sold on a market and that market yeah. is called a chain a blockchain yeah. and that block each blockchain has an underlying cryptocurrency that that fuels it or funds it so 
the most predominant one for our audience is e Ethereum, Ether. Yep. Um, Ethereum, and that's OpenSea, which is, to the best of my knowledge, that's the biggest NFT platform. That's yeah, yeah. It might be blur now. Can I just rewind a little sure, bit? Please. Because because please. this non fungible token, it's it sounds like just word salad if you not yeah. come across it. I think about uh, take the non off. Think about what a fungible token is. I was talking mm -hmm. about Ethereum and Bitcoin and things like that. They are fungible tokens because they're the digitally secured uh, stores of value. Yeah. They're fungible, which means you can replace one with the other. Right. I don't care if I've got 50 ETH Ethereum. I don't care which particular Ethereum I've got. It'll come from all kinds of things. They're just as valuable and just uh, and indistinguishable from the Ethereum in someone else's wallet. But a non-fungible token takes a takes. Uh, something and secures it cryptographically in the same way as that Ethereum or Bitcoin is secured, but it's now non-fungible. You can't exchange it. It's now a unique expression. Now, what NFT is brought to the art world and will bring to lots of other places like real estate and financial services and so on, what, what they brought to the artwork was the ability to say, I own that digital art. No one right. can do a right-click save as. No one can just... People can save the pixels if they just want to take a look at it, but you're the owner of this unique piece of artwork. And it's got not just proof of ownership, it's got provenance. You can look at the blockchain and you can see a complete trail of where this has been. You can see A sold it to B, who sold it to C, who sold it to me. So it's a non-fungible token. It's, right. it's a unique little capture of, and it could be JPEGs, it could be right. music, could be real estate it could be nft could uh could prove ownership of a house for example and that token of ownership is so fundamental to the to to um nft and i think art the the art market i think because it it, it does like you said is you can right click and save a digital image and so many people joke about that why do i need to pay a hundred dollars a thousand dollars or a million dollars for a digital image when i can right click and save it well um, it gives you the, the unique authority and 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 certification of a, of, of ownership, proof of ownership yeah. on a blockchain. So you do have that element and that in itself enables people to understand with the blockchain, you can go and create, you can tokenize uh, real estate, you can tokenize many different uh, things. And yeah. so we're only, as, as everyone says on Twitter, we're so early, and but we really are early in blockchain technology and crypto but here's my we have a lot to cover like i said in my email i could have made this bullet point list 20 <laughs> pages i have so many things to talk to you about but yeah. let's talk about because it's a really a fundamental issue and i think that this it, it's really caused a problem for me uh in in trying to uh, increase adoption is because of that tokenization because you have that proof of ownership right that's that's it uh via on the blockchain right that it that it makes crypto i think for me I, i'm a little bit torn and I, I we just had the cooper young art festival in memphis tennessee two days ago and i was there and there was like two hundred thousand people i was talking to a ton of artists and absolutely none of them were in the nfts zero none of them and so i was talking to them about adoption and why they're not involved in nfts and they're they're all interested and excited about it but crypto is the thing that absolutely that's that's the one thing so in their mind and also mark in, in my mind is like gosh do i want to be a crypto trader or do i really just want to be an artist and i i'm torn between those two worlds and i i and right now they're not mutually exclusive they're, they're go hand in hand so i know that open is allowing some cash transactions and we're starting to see that but my question to you mark is is crypto currency and the blockchain fundamental to art transactions today in the future do you feel um i think it will be i think it's uh, because of this question of provenance and especially digital art you know the digital art if you want to prove ownership and where it comes from and be entitled to sell it on to someone else at hopefully a higher price then it's got to be it's got to be secured in that way i think that the uh, the barrier to entry is still pretty high and it's still a it's still a scary environment i can't for my mum 
who's in her 80s, loves to have art on the walls. I can't even imagine explaining to her how to open up a wallet, sign a transaction and, you know, see, go and look at the thing. It's just not it's just not there yet. The place that's got it got it best, the place that is the easiest on board for someone into the world of NFTs is actually Nifty Gateway. Just because that looks more like an e-commerce site, you can attach a credit card and they'll hold it. Now, all of the all of the NFTs are well, most of them there are on the Ethereum chain, but you wouldn't know it because they do a central custodial thing for you. So I didn't know I, that, huh? Yeah, I've never yeah, I've never so, been mentioned so anything. I've, Tell us about I've, Nifty I've Gateway. Been, yeah, well, I've been hacked a couple of times um, and lost everything in my wallet, but everything that I had in Nifty Gateway was still secure stuff i bought like two years ago so they they keep hold of it for you they if you ever want to take it out to your ethereum wallet you can but but basically it's it's a bit of a safe environment it's centralized now everyone who's you know everyone on twitter who's keen on web3 will say oh no you get a ledger wallet and you take all of your assets off there and it's offline well if you've got to have something that's offline to keep safe you know when we're not at the right spot right. In, uh, in in the NFT space. So there are some places, and Nifty Gateway is the best example of them, which make it just like shopping at Alibaba or, or Amazon. Yeah. You, you see an NFT you like, you click it, it's in your account in Nifty Gateway, and you can sell it on there, or you can take it out to a wallet, whatever. It just makes it a lot, uh, a, a lot lower barrier to entry. And you don't have to do the currency swap. Like I just bought some more yeah. Tezos and, and Dogecoin. You can, you can attach Dogecoin, to, to my to my cost. You can attach your Amex card to it and uh, and sort of wow. run that up. Are the transaction fees uh, high on the, those? Just no, like it's a it's a lot low. I mean, on Ethereum, it it's varied wildly. You know, you've had transactions from two dollars to a hundred dollars right, right. in the last year or so. Right. This is all all at a Kind of fixed rate. It's a couple of couple of dollars. Well, that's that. important of itself because you know people and I, I, I look, man. I get it, man. I don't want to do currency swaps. I don't want to trade currency. I don't want to pay transaction fees. I don't want to have to finance miners mining crypto because you know I don't know what the hell they're spending their money on. But I'm sure it's a lot of you know uh, pork rinds and uh, beef jerky and diet mm -hmm. soda or whatever. And I don't want to finance those guys. So I I get the the uh, the reason why the most people that the average population won't cross the chasm and adopt nfts and digital artwork because of that crypto the the, the big barrier yeah. to, for people to adopt it and it and it is um and also the you just mentioned a second ago mark which is very relevant and recently relevant to us is that you've been uh uh, uh stolen from a couple of times and we have our good yeah. friend i think you're following him pagrasso luke Mar luke martin oh, yeah 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 luke martin. Um, he yeah. was he had a number of his artworks that were stolen from yeah. him recently right he had, a, he had a bad hack to the extent that he almost thought about giving it all up that's right and he's a wonderful guy yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's very, so it's you can understand, it, so it's easy to understand. So you not only do you have to deal with transaction fees, and like you said, with on the Ethereum, on the Ethereum chain, those those gas fees, those, that could be very, very expensive. And people are like, I don't want to pay all that crap just to get a digital NFT. You got that? Then you have the, call, the, the concern of theft being hacked and having all of the, there's this guy, NFT Gods, he's now changing his name and doing more on onboard yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I, I he was, he, well. he was people talking about he had $150,000 of his yeah. artwork stolen. And so there are legit people that have invested a lot of money in crypto and art and art and gotten ripped off. And so it's understandable that people are seriously concerned about that. So I think about, so how do we, so to me, that's like problem number one. How do we take a model like Nifty Gateway, which I've never been on before, and expand that out? How do we, what else can we do to get more people to adopt artwork, especially from my end? Because when I tell people that my artwork goes to support um, companion animal research, right? Our, our foundation, trying to mm -hmm. understand why our companion animals get pa cancer just like pets. People want to be able to support. They want to be able, just like going to, I want to buy your art, going to an art auction. Mm -hmm. But if they have all this stuff that they have to do to be able to support a charity, it's a big pain. So what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, there's a couple of things. Yeah, I won't keep banging the, 
gone for yep. Nifty Gateway because because yep. actually today is my last uh, my last uh, drop. It's okay. closing today. It's a last drop there just because the um, the rewards have kind of tailed away over okay. the year. But I'll still buy there because it's still got that safety factor. The other place that you could uh, that you could look at, which has very just because it's got very low fees, it doesn't tend to attract the hackers so much. Is the Tezos chain? So Tez has got, you know, Object.com has got these great artists, very low prices. You can you can go and you know you you like a king if you go in there with a hundred dollars, right, and right. You, you sort of buy fifty things from you know fifty different artists, and they they love you. So that's like um you know that's a that's a great thing to try out if you're just wanting to get exposure to more digital art. The other thing I, I did wonder about was things like. I don't know Etsy and Shopify. People people can relate to a picture they can see and print, and there's no reason why you couldn't say, okay, here's a, a you know print as you go service. You'll get a you'll get a, a printed <laughs> printed copy of it, and we'll save the NFT version of this in a custodial wallet, something right. like that. So they just see a very normal transaction, which is the buying a print, but actually they're getting a they're getting something saved off now that would take a little bit of infrastructure a little bit of setting up but it it gives people an easy way in because if the worst comes to the worst they've still got a nice picture hanging on the wall that's right well we're, we're talking a lot about the business and the, the the infrastructure and everything let's get back to art because that's really what it's yep. all about and, and and that's what i truly love and that has no barrier to entry because art is an expression as much about what life and what we learn about life and what we love about life. And let's start off with your art. So as we're talking, Mark, let me see if I can, I'm not 100% tech savvy. Ginger usually is here. Yeah, do you, you know what? I, I, I can I can share screen if you want. Uh, oh, can you do that? Yeah, go ahead, please. That'll make, I, I could, if you I can could, do that, that's a lot I could, better. Pr I could probably share screen. I'm looking for the, oh yeah, I've got it. But uh, let, let me just tell you how I got into visual Please. arts to start with Absolutely. because i told you i was more of a writer than anything else and i did the literary thing it didn't really work i had six months out as a collector but then then i started finding out about ai the artificial intelligence where you could put in words and it would come up with a picture so that was perfect for me because writing is my natural go-to mode and um, and but I had no kind of real motor skills or hand-eye coordination to do traditional visual arts. But now I could apply my words to generating something that looked quite acceptable. And I went in and I did. I think it was Night Cafe Studio to start with. I'd put something in. I'd be very pleased. I even started selling some of those. But that was the that was the way. And it was like. And people complain about AI. And I, I say, well, without AI. I'm not an artist. I'm not a visual artist at all. I'm just a wordsmith. So that was the that was the liberation. That was the opening door for me. Okay. And I went. I went. I uh, dove straight in. So I had this first phase when I was. Um, I was just dabbling with Night Cafe. Then I got into something which I still use called Visions of Chaos. Now Visions of Chaos has been going for a couple of years. You run it locally. You don't need anything online. You run it locally and. The guy who runs it, who is an Australian, well, Jason, just keeps on adding stuff to it. It's like a, it's like a, a framework within which he can put whatever new script comes on. So that's when I really started motoring. That's when I got a foundation account. One of the accounts I'll, sh uh, I'll mention to you is, is actually was hacked. So I've got no, I get no benefit from anyone buying or selling stuff that's on there. But uh, it's just, uh, just demonstrate what's, uh, what what kind of thing was in there but let, let me if if we can i'll just share Please. the screen and we'll just go through some things and i'll just i'll just talk through there's just 10 things that are probably okay. worth, worth having so just to on. clarify are you 100 percent ai art or do you synthesize like i do it with procreate and try to you're 100 percent ai 100 percent. Okay. i mean i use some tools to tidy sure. it up like uh but sure. they are ai tools as well like topaz to to put it together the only thing that i do in terms of post production is sometimes if i've generated a couple of couple of pieces uh, a couple of animation pieces okay. i'll glue them together with a video pad and then i'll put a soundtrack underneath it okay so so let me let me uh, talk sure. you through this was the first uh, i'll t talk you through from the point where i felt like 
I was producing a mm. more professional product. So let's just uh, host. Oh, the host is disabled. Oh, I didn't. I, uh, that's not not intentional. I mean, if, if if you the the other thing we could do is if no, I'm going to give you hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Give me one second. Right. I'm gonna. I'm going to all participants. All participants. Now see if you can do it. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to my. Can you see my screen? Uh, can you see? Can you see a, a screen at all? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's dive into here. Okay. And uh, I was just trying. I was trying to figure out if that was your computer or my laptop. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> that's um, yours. Okay. So, so the first thing that I I went because I got a a very high spec GPU. Uh -huh. I got. I got obsessed with detail and there was a, you know, Dali was just coming out at the time. I got this Russian Dali, which was put together by some people at Sparebank, um, which just created the, the most amazing detailed things. And I, I started just cranking out the detail. Now it comes up with a lot of, it comes up with a lot of artifacts, you know, but it's great for scrolling and zooming and, you know the artifacts are things like down in the. Can bottom you left. double click on the the artwork and bring it up? We're just looking uh, at the style. Uh, are you? Oh, you can't see. Oh, well, you can't look. see the actual. Tell you what, let me stop. Wait, stop I, actually, share. hold on. One. There you go. Yeah, yeah. For some no, reason, I'm I'm going to share share the screen, and I'm going to do. Let's share everything. Everything I I've got in front of me. If you could kind of bring it up like as a, a slideshow, it was just like a tile. Let's see if that. Yeah. Do you see the the? Do you see the actual? There it is. There it is. Yeah. There. Okay. So this is what I'm talking about. Uh, insane wow. amounts of insane amount of of detail. Yeah. That that no one else was producing at the time, and a couple of people really got hooked. Got a that. whole lot of sea creatures in there. Yeah, yeah. This was like the, all the creatures in the deep green ocean, or something like that, was the pump. <laughs> but it has things you have to watch out for. Like if you look at the bottom left. It's right. got this little tiled area. They, they call that noise, don't they? Yeah, or artifacts or whatever. This artifacts, wasn't one that yeah, was artifacts. actually produced. This wasn't one wasn't minted. But have a look at another one in a similar vein. Can you yep. see the um, the tapestry one now? Right. Yeah. So this is a tapestry finish, okay. and it's called cornucopia. And this was probably the this was as a one of one. This was the apex of my. NFT career because someone paid 0 0.4 ether for it um, right. to get this one of one off foundation. But again, it's it's using the Rudali thing. Now I could have carried on doing flowers and seascapes and things forever. Um, doing this, I just generated a lot of them. There are a lot of collections using this technique mm -hmm. in my in my um, sort of hacked source book old account. But I just wanted to move on to other things, so I started to do uh, to experiment and go a little bit more. This is the other end of the scale. This is super simple. Can you see the Zen Buddhist? I, I do. Is that night? It, that looks very nice and refined for night cafe. That is that night night cafe. No, the, I, I don't think this is night cafe. I think this was one an early edition of Stable Diffusion. Stable. Again, this was okay. using visions of chaos, having a very simple okay. uh, sort of Zen. Zen monk in a dusty monastery, and this is I like this so much. It makes me calm every time I look at it. Yeah, it uh, is. Great. It's it's got great composition, uh, wonderful lighting. It's it's wonderful. But you can uh, so, you can see the hand though, so you can see this is that a the hand's a little bit funny, isn't it? That right, but you can see that's an early version of AI because of the hand. Yeah. View. Yeah. So so I I like this so much. I've got this as my um as my banner on top of my Twitter account still. Uh -huh. um, but and I, I think this was this was put out as an edition on known origin and uh, and you know was sold there. So Very it nice. was um, so that the, so that was good. Then I think the next thing that happened was that I got the door open to me for um, Nifty Gateway. I got to be a publisher on there. Initially, I wasn't allowed to drop my own work, but then within a couple of weeks, they relaxed that. So the first thing I did was the this pile of monkeys and. I call this, I put this out there as like a token. Uh, it, it's a monkey because they're all very curious. I was curious. I called it fam 
because of the <laughs> use of farming. The, and I'm a, I'm a Sagittarian, I'm, but I'm 1956 December, so my Chinese astrological sign is the sign of the monkey. So I thought for all those <laughs> reasons, this was great. Now, the other interesting thing about this, it was the first thing I'd ever put on Nifty Gateway uh -huh. of my own. I put it out at $10, um, and 410 of them sold. Wow. So, so this simple thing, which didn't take me five minutes to make, it was like, that's the, mo the most I've ever made from a single artwork. When was that? What, how long ago was this? That was like October. That was, yeah, about October of 22. About so that was just, right when AI people was coming out. People were excited and paying. Just just, an, yeah. just under a year ago. So that so it had you know it's, I'm very fond of this one for a, yes a, indeed for, yeah there's a number of reasons, and then th this one for different reasons. Mm -hmm. I I put out collectors tokens. This is called Ozymandias. It's really the uh, you know the the poem Ozymandias, King of Kings, but taken from a desert setting and put into a jungle. What was significant about this one was. I was giving it away to people who'd collected my previous thing. People who'd collected FAM could get this for free. And I made a mistake and didn't put any limits on how many they could get. So people were sitting there through the night going click, 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 click. And this minted 15,000 pieces before wow. Nifty Gateway said, OK, that enough's enough. This was just wow. about half, halfway through the 24 hours. So this one, I got nothing from it initially. It yeah. was just given away for free. And some people literally got a thousand or more of these. Um, and then a big collector thought he was missing the boat and he came and started scooping them up. So the uh, the floor started to rise. Right. So this this one is the biggest mint and it's the most I've ever made on secondary sales because it was about 2000 even though it was a, a free piece, there was about $2,000 of secondary sales. Right. So this is... so. Yeah, I then came out with a token which had Aussie on one side and the the monkeys on the other, and made that a token which gave collectors benefits, um, sort of for the for the next year. Um, so so that was the the early days. More mm -hmm, recently, right. I've, I've started. You know, people say they like a story, <clears throat> and and uh, and I I put together. On my medium page that I've still got, I put together quite a backstory uh -huh. for these these couple of guys. This is uh, this, this guy's called Nobby, and this one's called Jaeger. Uh -huh. And Jaeger is the German for hunter. Uh -huh. Now the the lizard families were the top of the 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 tree, the highest caste in the planet Air One. So it, you've got these lizard people uh -huh. at the top. You've got the tech the tech people like. Right. Uh, Zuck, Zuck and Lord Zuck and others second time down down. So um and this one Jaeger or Hunter was the disgraced son of one of the highborn lizard uh -huh. clans. So you can see I, I'm sort of bringing in a little bit of um a little bit of simile or metaphor. Well, let's stop, let's stop right there and talk about that though, because I think okay. it's an important thing to, to to point out and discuss that there really are two distinct different schools or departures of uh, or really businesses or industries of nft art and i think yeah. that's an, a, a critical distinction there are artists legit artists doing legit art and then you have this pfp um, meta world where you're creating stories and characters that will become part that i think will become an important economy in of itself yeah. industry in of itself but I, I think that, and that, that's where a lot of the money was back in the day, the PFPs that were selling yeah. for so much money that people would show on their, as a profile pick PFP. And, uh, but in the, there, it seems like there is, but that's the one that tanked, but you still have the legitimate artists that are out there doing what they love, their life's work. They've been, they'll be doing art. They were doing art when they were born, probably when they yeah. were in the room, they were probably were taking the, you know, placenta or whatever and, doing finger art in the womb. And then when they die, they're going to be doing art right uh, on their deathbed. Those are le legit art artists um, that have been doing their art all their life. So for, for them, NFTs and the digital, digital world is just a new medium 
of transaction, right? It's just a new medium. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, 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 I really missed the boat on that whole PFP, the 10K projects. I did try a 10K project um, back in 20, uh, was it 21, 22? Yeah. Um, I had 10,000 pieces done. I had wow. the, whole, the whole contract written. I sold about 250 of them Wow! You know, the, oh. at point zero one, It would have been great if they'd all gone, but uh, they just didn't. Uh, but most just... of them, well, let's talk about that. Though. That's a lot, but I, I found that most of them were just people just scamming. I mean, they're just people trying to make money, and yeah. a lot of them were scams, and they tried to, they were like, I had like these roadmaps of how they were, you could monetize, you buy in, you get a free, yeah. but then and you do all these things. And it, again, it just, you're no longer an artist. You're some weird promotional crypto. It's a game. You're, you're, you're a game. Yeah. You're, you're more of a perform, performance artist. And that's just not a little to no interest to me, but I, but I wanted the money be for my foundation. And I created what I zombie Pyrenees or zombie, yeah. these zombie companion animals. And, and they had mm -hmm. a, a mutant strain of cancer with, but that turned them into zombies, but they didn't, they only killed people that abused animals. They were good zombies. Yeah, and so yeah. Same thing. I created this whole universe and then the PFP market tanked and, and then, and, 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 but, but, but it should have though, Mark, because the one, the other problem, and I didn't mention this before is, well, I did kind of, because you have theft in there is you have scammers, you have legit people out mm -hmm. there like uh, Matt Wallace and people out there uh, that uh, there are many examples that aren't artists. They see this as a tremendous uh, uh, money-making machine for themselves. And they don't care about these community they, communities they build. They don't care about the people that uh, meant their artwork for free. I don't even think that they care about their artwork itself. They hire these very expensive development companies. That was the other thing I was going to say. So I want to do these zombie companion animal cancer things. I talked mm -hmm. to a couple of development firm, for, for companies and they're like, yeah, we'll we'll build them all. We'll do it for 50 grand or 100 grand. And it's just mm -hmm. like it, economically that doesn't it just doesn't work out. It's not sustainable. So I think that it's good in one sense that it all came, the house of cards came tumbling down. And, and I hope that from the ashes, we do have people that have really interesting characters that have a great story. Because you could see like a George R. R. Martin, you know, uh, using, you know, creating a wonderful world with wonderful yeah. characters and that builds a legitimate community of people that want to be a part of it. That's legitimate business. And that's a wonderful business. And it yeah. should be. But you just, I, I don't know how you can get the scamming people, the the scammers out of it. And there's so many of them out there. That's another irritating thing for me is that uh, I just want to do art and I want to sell my art to benefit companion cancer, companion animal cancer. And that's pretty much what I want to do. So let's go on. We have so many things to talk about. Oh, AI. Uh, uh, let's get back to uh, AI and prompting. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Let, let me just. Sure, um, spin through the last couple all right um on the the latest things that have happened on ai is that you can now put in text and get nice little animations going so yeah. this is this is one that was done in runway runway um, okay so so for for the audience so what did you create that what did you, what was the image created in well the image was created by the software okay so, so in so, runway so okay. lit literally on in this case you say you know, silk, uh, silk material blowing across dusty sands or something. So this like was that. prom. This was prompt to animation, not image. This is prompt, prompt animation, not image. And okay. uh, and the same, same with this other one. And the the last one, the latest thing, and probably the the most complex I've got is, can you hear something? You know, I I don't know how. To, for some reason, I have never figured out how to get enable audio on this thing. Okay, well, it's 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 playing to me, but um, let, let's just say that uh, you you don't have to have to listen to it. It's this this was a, a a sort of combination of techniques went into this, because the runway generated the old lady with the the cowl, and then I actually re recorded my voice singing the, the song a cappella, then okay. put it through a, a, a speech translator. To actually make change the 
change the voice. Not that much, I might add. I, I don't um, know how Ginger and I both have tried to figure out how to enable audio. We could do videos, but never the audio because I've been trying to I've tried to play a couple. So if anyone in our audience knows how to, to figure that out on Zoom, please let me know. It's, it's, it's weird because I can hear it when I click on it. But of course, yeah. I've got it's on my my computer. Um, and then you take the you take a face and you go to this software called DID mm -hmm. and it will actually lip sync it'll put it'll make the face move in time with the with the song so so wow. so that's actually so that's actually your voice you're singing and it's it's all synchronized through the software DID exactly that's about as complex as I, as I've got the these there's one further trick that I'm going to try which is a song that I wrote which which this isn't this is an old 18th century or 19th century song um take a song I wrote and uh, have a sort of punk character lip syncing yeah. it so so that that's the sort of thing I'm interested in but the more I go into animation and sound and literary nfts the less of a market there is for it because right. basically people like people like a, a two second impact Sure. You know, they like to scroll through the feed, right? See, see something they like. They like gifts. They like gifts. It's, it's not really. It's not really even M, M, MP4s or or any. It's not really even that. They're just really gifts. But so to the audience, so Mark's done a wonderful job of taking you kind of through the evolution of of art of NFTs, starting with the early on um, Night Cafe, which is one of the first apps, all the way up to uh, Runway, which is the new animation, and that's a kind of an interesting point. And where I was headed is it's a it's a hamster wheel we're all on as artists that we're all adopting these new tools of artistry um, and animation is the new the latest tool. So it, and it's it's like it, it's almost maddening because you're just learning one tool and a new one comes out and yeah. then everyone's on that and those pieces are selling over there. So you got to go learn this over there. And so my question to you um, is, is that what you're doing? Are you just going to keep learning the new tools and putting new artwork or what? Do you have a game plan or are you just having fun? Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm just having fun. Do you Good. Know, I, I mean, probably about three or four months ago, I was semi-retired. About three or four months ago, I realized this isn't sustainable. I'm not making money on NFTs. I'm sort of half-hearted about the, the work. So I went back into the real life job market again. And now I commute to London a couple of days. I do six hours for a, a company. I've got a, I, I basically got a consultancy, which is in the financial services compliance space. And I'm doing that Monday to Friday, except okay. for today and now. Um, uh, but, but that squeezes things out, you know, so yeah. now, now I'm just following my whims. Now I'll, I'll, I'll look at the, software just because i think it's cool yesterday stable just came out with stable audio you saw right, i was able right. to i was able to whip up a little bluegrass session from a text prompt that's really cool to me that's right and, and so that uh i forgot the name of the software that is prompt to music which is yes. really cool what was the name yeah. of the software stable, stable audio Stable audio, yes, and uh, actually, I tried to sign up for it, and they've gotten so many people trying to sign up for it now. You have to join a waiting list, which yeah. is the other thing. Every time they create a new tool, AI tool for artists, um, it gets really blows up, and then you have to sign up, and you have to wait three months to to, to yeah, actually yeah. use it. Or, or, or you have to sign up for the pro version. Right, I've got, right. I've got so many subscriptions out there right now. I was going to ask I, you how I, much you pay in months on subscription because you oh, do have a job to be able to afford all the damn yeah, exactly. subscriptions. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> there's, so, there's some I hardly ever use, like OpenAI and ChatGPT, yeah. yeah. Rudali, um, Kyber. There's there's lots of tried and then just don't don't persevere with. Runway, I'll probably keep going. And, uh, and right. you know, what else? I think that's about it. But I now think, that, but I, I think the overriding, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure where I'm at. I, I'm a new, I, I'm not a new artist. I've been like, like you, I'm a wordsmith. I've been a writer. Uh, I've done art all my life, never really a, at a production capacity and never really earning money because I just love to do things that I love and I'm passionate about. And so this is just an extent, this is the next evolution of that. And so I'll be doing this for the rest of my life. And I'm not sure where I'm going to land. I'm just learning it all. I'm having fun with it. It would be nice to make 
a little back, but I have I've had zero sales. I had zero, so I can't even call myself a legitimate artist. Um, I think is the ruling on the field. Uh, but I am a collector. I have I have bought art, so I am a legitimate NFT collector. Uh, to the audience, uh, but I haven't sold any, but I don't feel that pressure and I'm kind of glad for it. Well, mm -hmm. it's weird because when you stop selling your art or minting it and putting out the for, for sale, other artists don't take you seriously, I don't think. Um, so um, on the consumer side, it takes my pressure off and it, it enables me to explore and do things without the the sense of urgency that I've got to go out and earn to live. As a, I, I hate the side hustle. Art as a side hustle to me, I understand people have to live, people have to eat, but art as a side hustle is not alluring to me. That's just not something I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. I want to do something that is an extension of me. My work is an extension of me and that people pay me for it. And it's that, it's that type of thing I want to build. And I've realized that that takes a long time. It takes a yeah. long time. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. So, but, but what I want to go to now, so you walked us through the evolution. We're now to mid, we're now to mid, um, not mid journey. We're now to runway. Runway yeah. is the new latest animation tool, and they're all based on prompts. And that's what I want to talk about next is AI, because you have this perception in the art world that you have some legit traditional artists that absolutely hate AI. They do not feel that um, artists uh, the AI is art that. Uh, mm -hmm. They feel like it's whatever, it's copyright infringement. And then you have like people like yourself and also myself that find it as an additional tool. It's a new, um, but none of that matters. The reality is it's going to be the future. Because think about it this way. How long does it take someone? How long would it take? How much resources? I like to think about it this way. If you look at some of the great masterpieces, even today, things that people do, the question becomes how, how many hours does it take to compose something like that. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of hours, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, and so on and so forth. With prompt engineering, you can create anything, lighting, aspect ratios, things that would take you months in terms of setup with lighting and actors and all these things that, as you know, that are intricate and complex, you can do with mere words. And to me, that is that is phenomenal. And any mm. any company, any business would see that and just say AI is the future. So that's what wins. So it doesn't really matter. It's not an art question, not a question of art. There's a commercial, there is a commercial, legitimate commercial future for AI art. And it is very, very real. Well, well, you know, the, the people who have, I can uh, appreciate people who've worked on their skills, who've developed over Absolutely. the years, you know, to, to see someone produce something that looks just as good on a push button basis must be very galling, you know, there, and you must be trying to find a way to distinguish yourself from them and, and sort of rubbish the people who are just come. But the same happened with the printing press and calligraphers. Right. There'll always be people who will do hand calligraphy, but, you know, printing press one, same with, you know, cars versus horse-drawn carriages, same with, AI versus traditional art. It's just, it's it's going to, it's democratized art. And the elite within art circles probably don't like that it's democratized art. You know, I, I've got the same thing, the democratized publishing and curation on Nifty Gateway. I was one of the early, uh, early entrants, but then the, the gates, now I can't complain because now some people are, publishing every day and there's 40 live drops at any one time whereas when i started there was just mine you know wow. that's that's just the way that's just the way it goes you open the door people come in to your point i am also glad now that i'm not relying on this to put food on the table right. i'd be doing a pretty lousy job if if i was i know that there's a big caucus of uh, of artists in other countries, which not the US, not the UK, who are um, who really, you know, a zero point one ether sale is a big deal for them. You know, they it it really does help the family out, help them get uh, you know move ahead with and just supports their life and their artistry. So I'm always aware that we're not we're not all the same. We can we can have it as a, a side hustle. We don't have to make money, um, and some people do.
Well, I think I think I think that the distinction is that you actually have the legitimate artists that are just prolific artists. They're like Picasso. Yeah, Picasso was the most one of the most pro prolific artists. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he did a lot. And so you have those, and they do editions. And you're right; those they sell those editions. They'll do 20 editions of a piece, and it will sell for five tezos, which is less than five dollars yeah. right now. And so of that that one artwork, they'll make a hundred dollars. And yeah. so uh, hopefully they'll uh, do several of those a week. And so they may make a thousand dollars a week. And I think that's a legit working artist. And I love and respect those people. I, I think I, I love it. I have legit Artemis fall. I, I do not consider myself in that category um, in terms of a di uh, visual art. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, as yet, um, mm -hmm. working on it, I will get there. And I'm certainly, I don't even know if I want my own style. I love it all. I love yeah. precisionism. I love minimalism. I love AI art. Um, some of the stuff is so technically difficult that I think it would take me so many, so many, so many hours that AI to me is I can have AI synthesize something as a background or a, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a background or foreground or at least an object in a synthesis piece for me. And it could do a much better job and I'll incorporate that. So we're going to, so art is going to be one of these weird things that it just incorporates. It's not going to make any sense. It even won't even be temporal in the sense that once now with VR, um, uh, VR, virtual reality, AR, VR, and meta, once that, those worlds become legitimately um, technically viable, the whole world of art is going to be weird. It's just going to be weird, yeah. but it's exciting well, though. I love it. I love it, art. It is. It is. Well, think, think about the next the next phase in the next year. This year, I was looking forward to getting text-based animation. We've got that and the year isn't over yet. In the next year, we're going to see convergence because we've got all the building blocks. And I was I was responding to Claire Silver, who was asking what, you know, what, What's next? What does next year bring? Convergence means we'll type in a text prompt and create a, a video, a, a film with lighting, camera tracking, characters, dialogue, background music. I think all of the all of the building blocks for, for that are there. Someone is going to take it all together and just say, okay, this is your your film director AI. Just type in. And and let's go. Or or you think about, you know, you just speak to Alexa or you're speaking to your microphone and your 3D printer goes off and does some right. three form sculpture. That that right there is the promise of Web3. And I think it's a very exciting promise of Web3 is that you're going to have DAOs or something for, for each creative project. A community will come together. They'll finance it. They'll architect it. And then the creators will come together and then build it out using whatever tools. And we are going to films. And that's my interest. I, I'm a writer. I'm, I've just written a screenplay um, called Hudson's River. It's in part about my travels. Um, I don't know how much about my background you know about me, but I lost a dog to cancer, three dogs now. And I've backpacked 4,250 miles uh, mm -hmm. around the country in three different walks. And so um i i over over my walks i've created sort of this fictional character that um that uh um has sort of become kind of one of my personalities and and i want to use these new tools to create sort of a graphic novel and then ultimately use that once you have the characters and then use the ai tools to create an actual hour and a half 90 minute film or something and we're we're going there you're right we're headed there how long do you think until we're there I, I I think yeah, do you know I've, years, I've just, I just I just looked at some guy called Rup Reinisto. What uh, was the name? From, Rup Reinisto, R A I N I S T O. Yeah. Um, he's just created. He just put up something which is just a I don't know if it's six minutes long. It's just a recreation of the um, uh, uh, some famous German knowledge uh, novel, which uh, which I, I forget the name of for, for yeah. now, but he, he sort of recreated the whole story. It's the, the, the one guy about the guy who wakes up metamorphosis, Franz Kafka. Oh, it's Franz Kafka, who, Meta metamorphosis, right? Yeah, it, it's the guy who wakes up and finds that he's an ant, an insect. An insect. Wow. He's yeah. recreated that from runway and other tools, yep. just from just from text prompts without any image uh, input. You know, he's just put that together, and it's 
it's there. So with enough um, dedication and time, you can do it now. It's going to get easier and you're going to be able to add in the dialogue, track yeah. the soundtrack within the next year. Easily. Can you imagine being a child growing up with this technology that you could just oh, use your computer yeah. and have it create a cartoon? Then so you could create your own little cartoons. Man, that would be so cool if to be a <laughs> kid growing up. I love yeah. technology. I, it's exciting. I don't think we're going to have a time to talk about the, the the horror side of AI that a lot of people are talking about now. Yeah. I do write about that, and it's very real. Um, I'm not a doomerist. I'm not an AI doomerist, but I do feel like that we're going to have we, we live in interesting times and they're going to we're, we're coming to a point um, singularity or convergence or wherever we're coming to. It's going to be interesting. But right now is the exciting time because you have you, yeah. like you said democratization. You have people, creative people that don't have the pedigree. They don't have the financial resources. They just have ideas and they want to have the be able to afford or have access to the tools to be able to create, and yeah. that's, it's that, that's real now, and that's exciting. The, let me give you the alternative. I know all about the doom scenarios. Let me give you the alternative utopian view of AI, which Stay is with it. Let's hear it. It it can replace so many jobs, and what's going to happen uh, that way? It's going to, if, if handled correctly, it could bring in this um u this utopian idea of us working one or two days a week you know the a sort of leisure economy right, right. that we always uh you know we need two things we need you know unlimited free energy right the, that that's coming sometime soon they've suppressed it for like long it. enough it's going to come as soon as that happens with ai most jobs that don't involve you know that don't involve i, I can't even think of something that AI couldn't do in the short to, to medium term. Um, so most most human work right. is going to be redundant. We have the leisure age we all uh, dreamt of, and we can get there with one simple thing, which is the work that is remaining that needs to be done should be shared uh, equally. Right. Among right. So, so that everyone has a, a level thing. of income. Let, let's talk about that. I think that's an interesting thing. I was listening to somebody the other day, a scientist or um, a scientist, uh, a, a, pro, a developer and programmer the other day, talk about what we talk about as UBI, universal basic income. Yeah. Instead of thinking about it that way, now with AI, let's talk about just a share of a, everyone sharing in a percentage of the creative royalties, a collective creative royalties. Or if you're a creator in of yourself, then you and your community share in that, and or if you want other communities to share in that, you can gift that as well. It's really exciting, and I think that that's the future of it. But that's a near term. I believe in the utopia that you're talking about, the utopia of AI in the near term. What I'm concerned about is the long term. I'm talking 2029, and that's not that far away. I, I believe I, I agree with Ray Kurzweil that 2029 is the point at which we can't stop anything. Uh, it's out of our control. I think it's out of our control right now. I don't think that even if I was a doomerist, you could take all the doomerists in the world and they're not going to be able to stop the power of AI. It can't do, be do you know what, I, Yeah, I, I used to love the Asimov robot stories. Yeah. They, had the, they had these three laws about the robot can't do any harm, can't uh, or by inaction let a human come to harm, etc., I don't hear about anybody body baking those things in to the fabric of AI. And you, you have stories about chat GPT telling people, yeah, yeah, go ahead, leave your wife and things like that. And, you know, things that are coming out that are even at this early stage, which are just contrary to the interests of the people that it's serving. Yeah, you need some safeguards in there. Uh, but, you yeah. know. The, the well, I just I I think, but I I go out even further. I've been thinking about AI since uh you know the, I I grew up in the eighties, so that was mm -hmm. the Terminator, that was Ray Kurzweil, the Age of Spiritual Machines, that was when the Omni magazine, remember that? That was when sci-fi was getting really cool and interesting, and so I've been thinking about this for decades and decades, and and I, I see. I, I believe now where I'm at right now is I believe that our genetic code was specifically to build AI, that our code was the code, a, 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 a universal code. Our code is part of a universal code to perpetuate life. Right. And that will come in form of the AI, of AI right in digital life. 
-hmm. which that the word digital won't really even matter at some point, a conscious life, a conscious existence, right? And whether once we reach that point, which is well past singularity, whether that AI entity has any use for the human species or not, that's the question and that's the issue. I don't think so because I think that humans, unfortunately, are very inefficient. We look, our minds are not inefficient. Our minds maybe are infinite, infinite. Maybe our minds are infinite, but our bodies are finite. We we have a flawed, our hard, hardware is flawed, and even our software is flawed, if you think about it. Think about it that way. So if somehow through technology we can somehow separate our software from our hardware then maybe it's not a lineal, li linear argument that AI will, will get rid of the human species. The human species will evolve to be infinitely. Well, it's, it's interesting. You should, I'll, I'll send you the link for the, for the, I knew we were gonna story. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the, the air one story, because this idea of the, of the techno cast in air one is that these are essentially machines that people, humans have transferred their consciousness into. And then they run around and they can last forever. That's the that's the idea. So we're thinking along same, weird. same lines. Yeah, yeah, but it's going to be weird, and 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 hopefully maybe in within our lifetime we won't have to worry about it. But until then, there's so many. It's just exciting. It's exciting times, and um, we're a little bit into. We're about an hour into it, and I kind of like to to keep it within an hour. Um, I don't know. If I just need to review my my bullet points and see. Um, now you sort of talking about. Go ahead. How about how about Twitter X? Uh, uh, Please, yeah, Twitter Twitter's great. You have mentioned a couple of 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 great guys, and NFT God has got me thinking about. You know, I'm using it, but I'm in a little wrinkle. I'm in a little wrinkle where I don't get a lot of traction. I don't get. A, I'm nowhere near getting monetized. Right. You know, you need five million views, and maybe I'm getting just over a million views or fewer on on a. Um, three month basis. So why is that? Because somebody who's following me, who has far fewer followers, um, is getting monetized. And I asked him why, how he did it. He said, "Well, there's lots of these Japanese forums where I just, I just respond. I, I use ChatGPT to translate a comment into Japanese. Post it up there. You get five million impressions in two or three days." Wow. So, Wow! Great, great hack. Wait, who, who who taught you that hack? Just uh, one one of the artists that I uh, I, I won't, wow. won't say who because he's because it is a hack. It's not he doesn't understand what he's saying. He's just saying what's a what's a good response to this in Japanese. Posted, I think that's great. I think that's great. But see, that's the that's the irritating thing. It, this I, I'm I'm glad we we should set aside some time to talk about Twitter now X. Because this is a passion. It is. It's an investment. I have made an investment in Twitter. Um, I, I get tremendous, exponentially better engagement on Facebook and to a certain extent Instagram. But the problem is Mark Zuckerberg capped my followers at 5,000 a long time ago. I would have probably 100,000 followers on Facebook if he hadn't wow. done that. But I... I I have a love. I've had a love hate relationship with Twitter under former management, under new management. I believe in it. I think it has potential for creators, and that is of interest to me. And monetizing is something of interest. But there's so much, and I'll use this term. It's not cussing. I use it fuckery. There's so much fuckery that goes goes on with businesses, with tech companies, and social media companies that they mess with the algorithm. They screw around. You have to learn all. It's gamification. You have to learn all these tricks. All these yep. little things, and you're like me, you know, you're you're much more handsome than I am and, and youthful looking, but uh, I'm a little bit younger than you, and I just don't have time for fuckery. I have yeah. so many other projects that I have going on. Mm -hmm. um, my film, my art, uh, the Dogs with Cancer, uh, my podcast. I don't have time for games. I don't have time to learn somebody's little game and algorithms and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all the little tech nerds, they all have one, whether it's Mark Zuckerberg or Elon. Or, or the other ones, they all have their little games and they think it's cute and clever. And it's like, man, I, I'm trying to run a business here. I got, I don't have time for that. But, but, but it's the truth is it, it, it works that way. And yeah. so what I like about NFT gods, what I like about what that account is doing is he's trying to publish the algorithm and say, look, it's not really a game. It's just, I think Elon is trying to solve the game aspect, aspect of it and say, let's make it a, a true business, right? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, it's not just you want to be a content creator, but you can't be a content creator. You can't be you can't monetize your account if all you're going to do is steal other people's memes and content and repost those and just do it that way or cheat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, that's what I hate. If this is going to be a game about cheaters win, I'm not interested because I don't have time to learn how to cheat. And I'm not a cheater. It's never how I've been. It's not how I roll. So so what I what I like about what it seems like Elon is doing, and I guess NFT guys is saying, let, let's just put it all out there. Let's just publish the algorithm and let's talk about it and let's make this thing effective. And yeah. that's the way it should be. 100% transparency. This is a community. Twitter X is a community. Let's put it out there. Let's talk about how to make this fair and equitable because we have creators that are doing some great work that we all want to be monetized. We all love what they do. We like mm -hmm. what they do. Or even if we don't like what they do, it's still... It drives the engine of things, and so we we need to we need to value those. But then we have people like my account, which and there are many like them, uh, rescue uh, animal rescue accounts that that can't monetize anything because how do you, like me with two dogs two thousand miles? My account's always been about dogs with cancer or animal cancer, companion animal cancer, and mm -hmm. human cancer is the same thing. One cancer is the whole thing. We talked about rebranding terminology. That was one of the things that's, good. that's one cancer is a thing. So, but how do you monetize that? How the hell do I make money talking about cancer? Nobody wants to talk about cancer and dogs unless you have a, a dog with cancer. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't like talking about it. I don't like thinking about it, but it's something we have to do. So where Twitter becomes, where I find this whole Twitter X interesting is, and whether I'm curious to see whether Elon's going to become successful is how do we how to reward great creators and content, and on the other hand, subsidize important critical content on the other hand and make it all work. So nice. I'm excited about X. I'm interested. What are your thoughts about it? I Well, I think uh, it's really been an education following NFT God. Yeah. Just because of the insights you're giving, you know, you get a three-day ban uh, and you don't understand why. Or right. you get... You get de-boosted and you get no likes. You don't don't the idea that let's make it all visible at least, because then you know what works, what doesn't. Who who are you following? Who's got a toxic reputation and is dragging you down? I uh, one thing that I'm working on at the moment is just I, I found out by the by that you get de-boosted if you're following more than two and a half thousand people. I, I at one wow. stage was I was just I was just doing follow for follow, you know, and it because at a certain point, when I got to about ten thousand people, I was following, Twitter would just start handing me three three day bans because they thought I must be a bot. So now I'm over the next couple of days, I'm bringing it down below two thousand five hundred because when I actually analysed it, you know, six or seven thousand people that I was following haven't posted in the last six months. Yeah. Now they've they've just left the platform basically. So why? Why have them clogging up my follower list or follow? Well, let's, let's talk about that one point right there. And God, I could do an entire, just a whole bunch of episodes on Twitter and X. And that that's one thing that irritates me because that makes no sense to me in the algorithm. Because if the game is, is we're all supposed to be a part of a community, theoretically, we all should be following each other, right? Theoretically, yeah, yeah. it all should be a community. There shouldn't be these big accounts that follow 25 people and they have 20 million people following them and then that's fueling and they get all the money that's where that's where i disagree it's oh. it's awful it's like it a, a, the the way it's set up at the moment it's like a medieval court absolutely where you, where, where you have to curry favor with the next person up absolutely. and you and you're penalized for looking downwards and helping someone else up the ladder that's right. It is medieval. Yes. Yeah. So how do we get that to, to to Elon and Linda and his new CEO and stuff? And the feedback thing is like, if you don't provide feedback to your users, they don't understand why things aren't working. If they don't understand why things aren't working, they're not going to spend the time trying to fix it. And they're just going to leave, which is what people are doing. The NFT Twitter sucks. I don't know about you, but when I got involved, NFT, NFT, Twitter NFT well, it was a lot of bots and a lot of PFP and stuff, but now it's just like it's gotten so bad, and I think it's because people are frustrated with it. And uh, so I don't know what's going to happen to NFT Twitter, yeah. but I'm excited. But I just think yeah. we're getting frustrated because of all yeah, the your, your your video. Oh, sorry, your video froze for a while. Have a read of NFT God did a little 
did one of his posts was about clusters. And I think we're, what we're seeing is the effect of clusters, which is if you are following people in the same interest sphere um, and you're always posting about that topic, you get trapped and you don't get any visibility. People outside of that bubble don't. So that's happening to you with dog cancer. And now it's happening to you with NFTs. Whatever right. you say, I mean, I've always just followed people on the NFT space, but I sometimes put out stuff that's, I don't know, life advice or things I've learned along the way. Nobody sees them except the people who are following me anyway. You know, they don't get any any promotion. They don't get boosted outside of my bubble. So the uh, so the question is, how do you get? How do you break out of the bubble? Let more people see. You know, maybe those other people will have an interest in dog cancer or NFTs, but you have to break out of the cluster first. It's it's the most fascinating technological problem um, I think that that we're facing right now. Society, how do you make social media valuable, truly valuable, to deliver the value and promise? that it has, that it holds, I think. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about how society works right now, it's the same thing, right? I look at the calendar of events of things I'm interested in. There's, oh, look, there's a uh, there's an artist uh, showing a gallery mm -hmm. event, I'm gonna go to that. And then there's uh, something going on at an animal rescue uh, meet and greet, so I'm gonna go to that. And so I go to those two events and who do I meet? Artists, curators, collectors. Who do I go to the dog event? I meet rescue people, volunteers. It's the same thing, but so, so in my universe, I'm still sort of pigeonholed and limited to that. So, so the the greatest experiment with this whole thing is how do you expand your your community outside of your community yeah. in a way that to make it valuable and and to, to for everyone. It's it's a, probably the greatest challenge technological challenge uh, I think we're we, we're confronted with um, yeah. socially because as as you know social media. It's the future. It's not going away. It's given us so much power. The ability to communicate with people all over the world in real time and not just normal people, leaders, people of substance and and, and importance. Um, so we know social media is not going away. We just don't know how to effectively use it yet. Do you do you think that Elon will fix it? Do you think I, I, will... Yeah, he's, he's got a better chance than anyone. anyone I agree. Because... Because for all all I'm saying about these clusters and breaking out, I think that um, I think the the other social media channels are more prone to echo chambers than than X is now. I think X has this whole thing going on, which is more important than NFTs, probably more important than than dog cancer, which is the whole free speech thing. There are people getting rehabilitated and given a voice on X who've just been silenced, they've just right. been squashed. People who are telling the truth about important topics, who've just been squashed because it didn't fit the narrative. Um, uh, and, uh, you, you know... That, that, go, that goes back to fuckery. Is that they, oh, they, yeah, yeah. To, I mean, the, Elon is, is kind of doing something which is just chopping off at the knees the mainstream media, the other, uh, the other uh, online platforms, and, you know, making... People are able to kind of follow, follow the, follow the trail, follow the breadcrumbs, and actually find out things that they couldn't find out that was just being withheld from them previously. That's a real important service that well, uh, it, that X is a, doing. I don't know what it, what what I, I guess it's just it's human nature. I know that of course is that when you have tech billionaires that create a social site that they they just feel like that they've got to move into social engineering. That's where they go. And they, they, that's when they start fuck. That's that's when they start with the fuckery, and they start manipulating things and uh, spreading dis or, or uh, throttling what they say is disinformation or misinformation. And this this uh, tech billionaire says this is misinformation, and this isn't. The other one says the exact opposite, and it's just it's 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 fuckery at a level right now that's not sustainable, and it really shouldn't be tolerated. It shouldn't be tolerable. At all, or in, all in our society, and I think that Elon Musk has the the best shot at solving it because I I believe that well I know he's a he's a businessman and understands one immutable fact is that people need data information to do things in life to to live effectively to make the the right decisions make correct decisions to to live to thrive to grow to protect themselves data and information is absolutely the most important thing 
towards our existence. And the manipulation of that and the fuckery of that is it should be a crime uh, at the highest level. So I think that Elon sees that we need a solution. And I think that that he truly is working on a solution uh, at a level that nobody else is working on. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So that's all right. So we've gone, man. We've run long. My apologies to our audience. I'm nerding out a little bit. I've been wanting to talk about NFTs, X, Twitter, art for a long time. Mark, have I left anything else off the list that you wanted to talk about? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I, I've got no coordinated plan going forward. I'm going to follow, you know, follow my interests. My interest. Are you still probably... doing art though? So, so yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's go yeah, back yeah. to Saucebook. You started this off with Saucebook, and I was, I was, I was heartbroken because I, you never featured me on Saucebook, <laughs> and I'm an arrogant artist, and I wanted to be a yeah, here. So no, tell us not, about, why I, you. Not, so tell us about why. I'm not abandoning curation. Okay. I'm not. I'm not even abandoning curation on Nifty Gateway. All I'm doing is bringing to a halt a series that I had that was running every Sunday without fail for the last year and that's just become unsustainable partly because of you know declining sales but also because i've got a you know a monday to friday job now but i'm still interested in both curating and creating because you are an important side, part of the good because you are an important part of the nft community you you i've, I've watched you for a while you know, even before i started following you and and you followed me back thank you for that you know, I've been watching you for a while, and, and you you always have a such a positive attitude. Um, you get frustrated, like every one of us, but you 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 you're an, you're an important figure in the community. And when I saw that you were ending Saucebook, um, uh, you know, it concerned me because we need people like you and Progresso, Luke Martin, and other people that really I think are the glue uh, that keep the the NFT community together on Twitter. Yeah, thank you very much. No, I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. I am good. Good. I'm going to I'm going to have uh, expand curation. I'm going to keep on curating on probably on foundation. I might have a one of one collection at some stage, but the initial curation on foundation will be a low priced store that anyone you know I can I can add up to a hundred artists in there, and they'll just have a you know a suggested price limit of 0 0.01 ether. But it can be an addition of a hundred or a thousand or whatever they want, and then uh, I'm also going to carry on collecting on Tezos, mm -hmm. um, and to fund that I'm going to have a series of open editions. I drop an open edition that runs for a month, but drop a new one every day. So I'll end up with thirty things that people can choose from for five Tezos, and the income stream from that is going to be recycled. I'll never cash out anything from Tez. I'll just recycle that into buying from other people in, in the community. So that hopefully will be self-sustaining, which is what every good side hustle should be, at least. Um, so I'll have the the Tez, the uh, Ethereum, and who knows what else will. And I've just got onto the Hug platform, which is for <laughs> artists and collectors and curators. Uh, I'm keen to explore that as well. I'm interested to hear about that. I've, I've learned about it. There are so many platforms out there now. Mm -hmm. I'm on Object for, for the audience, if you're interested. It's objkt.com. And that's where Tezos, Tezos art, uh, artists, and you find a bunch, a bunch of great art. Tezos is a wonderful community too. But I, that's good to hear. I think that, I mean, look, so long as I believe that everybody calls this a bear market. I think it's a little bit stranger than that, uh, weirder than that. Um mm -hmm. And I think it's more of a shakeup. We're, we're it's an evolving scenario we're in right now. I think so long as that the people that are true to the community and the people that are here building building the community every day will get through it, supporting us, fellow artists will get through this, and we'll yeah. see what better time. So I'm glad you're sticking with it. Are your artists that you're curating are the only AI artists? Or are you doing? No, no, no. I've, yeah. I've had I've had abstract artists. I've done some photography collections. You know, lots of. Lots of uh, 3D animation, all that kind of thing. I'll send you the link, and you can please. I'll, browse, put it, I'll post it or not. Browse through the uh, through the you know the Sourcebook Sundays to date because there's been a, you know the second one I had was Iranian female artists. Mm -hmm. Just about the time that became a very hot topic, but we'd planned it for months in advance. So yeah, I'll send you that. You can have a browse through. But I, I think you're right. It's not quite bear and bull. I think people are wrong to think this is, right. you know, it's a bear market, a bull market, just like crypto. Crypto is definitely 
going into a bull market from next year, you know, for sure with a halving. I think people expect NFTs to do the same, but I think something different has happened with the NFTs. It's affected by the downturn in crypto, but there's also been an explosion of uh, of supply and there's been dwindling demand. So there's just a, a natural cause and effect there. Right. Um, it's driven down prices because everyone wanted to be an artist. Everyone who could be but, sort of became an artist. Like I said, it got democratized. Right. But, but the first people, the people who were driving the last bull market in NFTs were the crypto wealthy. They were people who'd made a load of Ethereum and it cost, you know, it was peanuts for them to buy something for a half an Ethereum or something. Well, they are now feeling a lot less wealthy because Ethereum has come down. A lot of them have exited the market or they're, they're very selective. They'll only go for blue chips. But meanwhile, you know, thousands and thousands of creators have come in. The ratio between collectors and creators is really skewed. And that's what means that even when Ethereum recovers, it's not going to be immediate that, mm -hmm. you know, suddenly every artist is making money hand over fist. Yeah, well, it's interesting times, and I'm I'm look I'm excited I'm excited about it, and uh, and it's going to be an exciting year. I think you're right about that, and uh, I can't wait for the next new tool uh, above and beyond yeah. uh, runway, which is which is the next newest latest craze. So, yeah. uh, Mark, I'm going to have you back on our show. We'll maybe follow up, uh, maybe in a year or so, check in on you, cool. see what your art is. I I'm actually thinking about doing um, a, a separate podcast. Uh, obviously, I've got to keep this about our fuzzy butts and friends, uh, friends of our fuzzy butts. Uh, but uh, NFT is a part of my life. Art's a part, uh, part of my life. And using this as a way to support companion cancer, one cancer cause is certainly, um, uh, I'll be doing that for a minute of my life. But we need to, I'm thinking about doing a separate podcast on art and AI. And if I do that, we'll certainly have you on. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about so many other things that we weren't able to go over today. So thank you so much for being here. Okay. Thanks very much for the chat. It's All right, Mark, where can people find you on? Are you only on X Twitter or are you elsewhere? Uh, that's the only place I'm really active. I mean, I've got a Discord account, but um, you know, that's just in. You know, I don't think really anybody in my audience is no, no Discord. <laughs> no, Twitter. But, but the, the funny thing is, the, because I've grown this organically over time, you just Google Sourcebook. I'm all over the first page of Google. Yeah. So, you know, if you Google my name, Mark Kelly, you find astronauts and senators and, you know, keyboard players. But Google Sourcebook, I'm I'm right there. Well, you did, a, you did a wonderful thing, Mark, and you were an early adopter. So you 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 got on board early with Nifty Gateway and you did you really helped out a tremendous number of artists. Uh, and uh, so you've done a great thing for the community. I look forward uh, to seeing what you've got left in you still. So All hopefully right. over the next year, we can get you we can get you fired from your job and working on art 100 percent of the time. Yeah, why not? All right. Yeah, well, you know, so. art, art was never meant to be a side hustle, but it is kind of cool when it is, though. So. Yeah. All right, okay. well, thank thanks, you so much for your time. All right, talk to you soon. Bye. Cheers to you. All right, everybody, thank you. Hold, it's, hold, hold tight, Mark. Uh, don't don't hang up uh, or leave when I when I sign off here. Uh, we'll want to wrap things up. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us for our special edition on art and NFT here on Fuzzy Butts and Friends. Thank you to Mark Kelly. You can find him on social media. We'll put that uh, in our show notes as well as maybe some of his links to his artwork. So you can see some of the great AI artwork that he's doing and videos as well, and animation as well. Uh, we'll see you next week. You can find our podcast on uh, the podcast platform, such as Spotify and iHeartRadio. You can also check us out live, or not live, but uh, video, a video feed of this on our YouTube channel at fuzzybuttstudios.com. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Puppy up. Talk soon. Thanks. Bye.